Katanas. Pretty sweet, right? But have you ever wondered if that sweet ass katana you bought at the mall was perhaps a little too friggin' sweet to be true? Perhaps the man with the ponytail who sold it to you told you it was battle ready and made of glorious Nippon steel. Well, by the end of this video, you'll be able to tell the quality of a blade before even pulling it out of the sheath. And if that doesn't get you laid, I don't know what will. Is your katana real or fake? We live in a world full of lies and deception. And if you don't know anything about katanas, you could get totally ripped off. Can you tell the difference between high carbon steel and fork metal? In order to do so, you'll need to know what makes a katana real or fake. Nowadays, you can buy katanas anywhere. You can get them on Amazon, pawn shops, that one weird store in the mall that sells dragon statues. For comparison, I have two katanas here. One is an authentic Paul Chen Kami katana, priced at around $2,000. This thing has it all, a hand-forged, folded K120C powdered steel blade that's differentially hardened using traditional methods. You can clearly see the tight grain pattern created by the folded steel. This sword is furnished with the highest quality fittings that Paul Chen offers, including real gold inlays and beautifully handcrafted details. This sword truly is a work of art. And today, we're gonna compare it to this $200 sword I bought on Amazon yesterday. For starters, you gotta consider how much you're spending and where you're getting your sword from. If you're buying a $20 katana off eBay from a guy who calls all his swords battle ready, full tank, Damascus steel, then he probably looks like this and you're probably gonna have a bad time. And the nice thing about these practice katanas, Oh, oh, that hurt. The only website I know that sells real swords and calls them battle ready is Cult of Athena, but that's because that website was made in the year 2000 and it hasn't been updated since. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Now the absolute minimum you're gonna need to spend if you wanna buy a real katana is around two to $300. Now that might seem like a lot, but the way I see it, these swords are like works of art. It's like buying a really expensive painting. Only difference is, is this piece of art can cut a man clean in two. Most of the time, you can tell the quality of a blade just by its furnishings. No one's gonna dress up a crappy blade with nice fittings. One of the easiest ways to tell if a katana is fake is by the thickness of the segeo. Now this is the cord wrapping that is around the scabbard. And it's a guarantee that if they skimped out on this, they definitely skimped out on the blade. The segeo should be a nice thick silk cord wrap. If it looks like a cheap polyester shiny shoelace that's super thin like this, then it's definitely fake. This rule also applies to the handle wrap. There's a quick test you can do by taking your thumb and attempting to move the handle wrap up and down on the handle. If it moves too much on the handle, that means the core wrap is both cheap and the person who did it didn't do a very good job. Next is the ray skin. Now this is one of the most difficult things to fake on a katana because ray skin tends to be pretty expensive. Real katanas use real dried stingray skin on the inside of the handles to give the cord wrapping something to grip onto. While fake katanas use molded cheap plastic uh, imitation ray skin, an easy way to spot the difference is real ray skin tends to have deviations in both the size and patterning of the bumps. And also you should be able to see a clear separation in between the bumps on real ray skin as opposed to the molded plastic. Let's compare these two handguards. The Kami Katanas has intricate, painstakingly hand-carved details, gold inlays, and is cast out of thick, high-quality iron. Did you say that the Kami Katanas has? <laughs> the Kami Katanas has. <laughs> now onto the Amazon sword. The uh, handguard looks cheap and brittle. The gold is painted on poorly. I wouldn't trust this handguard to protect my hand from even a judo chop. And you got your ninja chop let alone a sword strike. First, I'm gonna take a look at the Amazon sword. Uh, what? Huh, okay, well, um, I guess it's to protect the, the scabbard from, from the oil, I don't know. Or maybe protect the blade from the inside of the poorly made scabbard. Okay. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice on a katana is the temper line or the hamon. 
It is the wavy pattern on the blade. Traditionally, the temper line is created by applying a special type of wet clay onto the edge of the blade before the final firing process. I'm not gonna go too into detail, but generally when you forge a sword, the higher the temperature, the more flexible the blade, while the lower the temperature, the harder and more durable it is. Traditional katanas do both in a process called differential hardening. This allows the spine to remain flexible, making the steel more resistant to breaking while at the same time retaining a super hard durable edge. The Kami Katana has a traditional Paul Chen style wave motif going about the homon, and you can tell that it is actually a truly differentially hardened blade. I mean, just look at this. This shit is beautiful. And because it's all done by hand, it means that no two swords are ever the same. Now, when you compare it to the Amazon sword, this homone is clearly fake. It's cheaply acid etched onto the blade. You can tell because the edge is the same color as the rest of the blade. And the only discoloration is where they did the acid etching. This means the blade was not differentially hardened, meaning the edge is probably quite weak and brittle. Now, I'm no metallurgist, but I feel like it's safe to say that this probably isn't even made of high carbon steel. I would never recommend using this for cutting. Sure, you could slice some water bottles in your backyard with it, but anything more than that, you risk the blade snapping and potentially really injuring yourself. Oh, that got me good. So overall, I don't ever recommend buying one of these fake swords, even for display purposes. Sure, they might look cool and they're cheap, but if you consider that for less than $100 more, you can get a legitimate real katana, it just seems like such a waste of money. Ronin, Chenis, and Paul Chen all make quality entry-level katanas for under $300 that are hand-forged and meant for cutting. I'll have links to them in the description if you guys are interested. Alright guys, hope you learned something, and if you want to check out some more katana videos, check out Matthew Jensen's Drunk Sword Reviews. He's a really funny guy who knows a lot more about swords than me, and he definitely deserves more views. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.